What's up everybody and welcome to BioMastery Raw TV. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about sticking points, plateaus, etc. And this came from an email directly from, let me check this guy's name out, Jason McCroy. Now he said that, you know, it'd be cool if you could see this in a video. So Jason, we're going to go ahead and put this in because I think everybody can learn a little something from what we're about to talk about. And he says that uh, he's 5'9", 180 pounds, 28 years old. Um, his diet is with zero cardio. His diet is 2850, 2850 calories. That's what his, his um, caloric intake is. His flexible dieting or IFYM. Protein is 184, fats are 71, carbs are 275. Currently running 400 calorie deficit, assuming that he did no cardio. So his training is traditional bro split, okay, which is like chest buys, legs, back tries, and shoulders. I guess I don't know if they're on consecutive days or they're split up. Uh, he starts each session with the barbell compound movements. He does cardio twice a week, along with one or two HIT sessions, HIIT sessions, high intensity interval sessions, for 10 minutes in length. Cardio consists of incline treadmill hiking. So his question was, he's been dieting down for eight weeks now, has lost seven pounds. The last three weeks, the scale has not moved at all. He increased his cardio from one 20 minute session above to listed. From, okay, so he added 20 minutes of cardio uh, per week. He's reduced his carbs from 300 to 290 to 275 each week. So he's been decreasing the calories and increasing the cardio slowly week by week with no response from the body. Any suggestions or ideas to what's going on? Now what's happening is he has hit a plateau to where his body is adapted to that lower calorie and it's adapted to the cardio that he's putting it in. Now to me, the first thing that jumps out at me is if you're trying to get leaner, okay, because seven pounds is a drop in the bucket. You gotta figure when you first start dieting, you drop some water, five, six, seven pounds of water like instantly. So okay, so now the water's gone. So what do you got? Three or four pounds of fat that you lost in two months? I mean, that's really, really not a lot. So now what is the problem here? Four, first of all, he's going with the 400 calorie deficit. He's going very strictly by numbers, which the numbers are actually holding him back because he's trying to not push cardio number wise. And he's trying not to drop calories because he's looking at the deficit, etc. My personal opinion is if you're not getting lean enough, because he's 180 pounds, and he's only eating a, about 100 and 84 grams of protein. That makes no sense to me. If you're 180 pounds, I'd put that at least at least 210, which some people may say I'm crazy, but if you put it at 210, your body's going to get stimulated. Metabolism's going to get stimulated, hands down. Okay, And there's a good possibility that you're not building any muscle because you don't have enough protein. Scale's not moving up or down. So I would change the protein. The carbs, I would cut the carbs on 275. I mean, Lavroni in his prime dieted on 300. Okay, and he was like 250 something pounds. Okay, so now I know for a fact that if he can diet on 300 grams of carbs and you're 180 pounds and probably don't have the same genetics as him, 275 is too high. Okay, what it should be, I don't know, but you're gonna have to change it. And it's pretty apparent that, you know, dropping at 10 grams at a time is not gonna work. Now, if you're adding 10 grams at a time, trying to add like reverse diet, that, that's different. But when you subtract 10 grams at a time, you're not going to see much happen with that. Now, if you pull 50 grams, you're going to see something happen. Um, the cardio, I don't know why you're not doing more cardio if you want to be lean. It stimulates your metabolism. It really makes a difference as to how lean you get and how fast. Now, the 10-minute HIIT sessions, you're only doing those a couple days a week. You're doing a couple 20-minute sessions, 25-minute sessions or whatever. Unless you're super active, okay? And even then, if you're super active at your job or whatever it is you do, that becomes part of your daily caloric expenditure. Your body adapts to that. So it's not considered exercise anymore. And your body doesn't have to adapt to get any better at it because you do the same thing every day. And it's as best as it's going to get. So that means to get more stimulating, to stimulate the metabolism more, you need to do some more cardio. I mean, you need to ante up and pull 30 minutes a day, six or seven days a week. I mean, let's face facts, 24 hours in a day, 30 minutes out of that day to do cardio is not excessive. Let's face facts. Your body is a machine and it's meant to move. It's not meant to sit at a desk. It's not meant to go to happy hour. It's meant to move. So if you're not moving it, and I don't mean muscular contractions by training, I mean the cardiovascular system, your lungs, your heart, all that stuff, cardiovascular, your um, respiratory system, all that stuff is meant to be worked and you're not really working it. So my advice is to go ahead and jump start that cardio, change the protein and the carbs and see what happens to your physique now. I guarantee there's going to be a, a drastic change and whether people say, well, it's, a dry, you know, it's because of the calorie restriction or, you know, energy, uh, caloric output, uh, excuse me, energy output, my diet brain is not working again today. Well, 
all you have to do is a couple days a week before you hit a plateau, put in some carbs again. Jack the carbs back up to 300 for a couple days, like two days. Drop them back down again to like 200. And watch how your body changes. It's that simple. Okay, there doesn't have to be caloric deficit, this, that, and the other thing, and I gotta go by the basal this. No, like your body right now is stuck. So take what you're doing right now, change it to move back to what moving in the track that you want it to go, in the direction you want it to go, and then before it slows down and hits a plateau, throw the carbs back in. Stoke your metabolism. Get it jacked back up again, then yank them out. Your body's gonna continue to burn fat. As long as you're doing that cardio, because don't forget oxygen, you need to uptake oxygen to burn fat. That's how it works. So the more the body, the more oxygen your body can uptake and utilize and is better at doing it, the more you're gonna burn. On top of it, your basal metabolic rate will go up and it'll be better at burning fat. So all the way around, you know, I see this as a very basic way to diet, which is gonna hit sticking points, and then you'll have no choice, unless you do what I'm telling you right now, except to cut calories more and to increase cardio. By the time you're done, you'll be on 1,800 calories on like two hours a day of cardio, because if you haven't budged eight weeks, your body's stuck, okay? It is not being stubborn, it's stuck. And it's probably gonna take three or four days for it to get unstuck. So you gotta give it a good couple weeks of pulling those carbs on increasing that cardio to get back on track. But your body's gonna change fast if you make these changes. And that goes for anybody out there. Don't wait six weeks, four weeks, eight weeks, three weeks to change something if it's not working. I mean, obviously you're trying to gain muscle if you're not gaining Five, a stupid message thing popping up. If you're not gaining five pounds a week, that's fine because you're not going to gain five pounds of muscle. But you can drop anywhere from, I'd say, a pound or half a pound up to, and I've done it, and more, a lot of people I know have done it, seven pounds in a week, depending on where your training is, your genetics, different supplements that you're using, like L-carnitine works phenomenal when you're trying to burn fat if it's used the right way. Ephedrine, caffeine, and aspirin, phenomenal, which helps even more. So now you're looking at other things that you could take. If people are crossing that line with clenbuterol, clenbuterol helps you burn more fat. So a lot of things can be done, but don't get stuck inside that box where it says you have to do this, you have to do that. No, you don't have to do shit. There's so many ways to skin a cat that you're actually holding yourself back, and it's evident by the last eight weeks that you've made no progress, by thinking inside the box. Just take a step outside that box one time, just one time, and see what a difference it makes. BioCTraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. www.biocitraining.com is the blog. And we're, ooh, this is the bicep. And we're out.